right, so th is this all the girls' water polo team? Is here? Are we, miss are we missing anybody? Okay, so you guys ever do pull-ups as part of your training? Yeah. Rarely. So if I ask, what's your first name? Sorry, Ashley. Okay, Ashley. How many pull-ups can you do? Like in a row? <laughs> Probably five. Okay, five. How many pull-ups can you do? Three. Three. How many can you do? Oh my gosh, guys, you're stronger than that. How many can you do? Ooh, what? That's <laughs> really hard. Five, three, two and a half. 15. I'm here to tell you, if I learned anything going through Bud's training in 25 years in the Navy and working in SEAL teams for the majority of that time, if I learned anything, all four of you are wrong. Because I guarantee you, give me a couple weeks of your life, I will have you doing double two and a half. I'll have you doing double. I might not double you on 15, but I guarantee you we'll get over 20. You'll definitely do more than five, actually. I mean, it's, everybody has this, this, it's almost like a threshold of what you think you can do, right? With a, from a physical perspective, but it's more of a mental perspective, right? We all have in our brains that there's only so many 25 squat that we can do. There's only so much time that we can egg beat her with double bricks in each hand, elbows out of the water. There's only so much that we can do, right? Everybody has this threshold in their mind. And when you go through something, and there's a lot of things, it's not just SEAL training, there's a lot of things in life you can do. But when you go through something that helps define for you that you can shatter all those barriers, it really, helps you understand that you can do anything that you want in life. You can achieve anything, anything you want. I'm sorry, I didn't see you right now. You know, you go, you go through this thing called Hell Week. They keep you awake for almost six days. You only get a little cat nap or two during, during that whole six days. It's crazy hard, but it's not hard physically. It's hard mentally because you immediately think, Oh, I haven't slept in one night. Now I'm just going to be mental jello. I can't do anything. No, I'm sorry. That's, that's totally not true. You can keep going through all kinds of mental barriers and thresholds. Does that make sense to you guys? So when you're talking about a sport, like, hey, how's it going, man? Come on in. Screaming Eagles in the house. Right on, man. Hey, you still? Yeah. Hey, how you doing, sir? Hey, you still? You will. I work, I work for General Campbell in Afghanistan oh, for that's a year. Awesome. Yeah. How's it going? Hello, how are you doing? All right, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's, 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 that's the point I want to get across to you. Whatever you think you can do, whether it's in water polo or anything in life, you can always do more. Always. Right? Hey, right on there. You guys work here at the high school? Are you just visiting in the recruiting shop? Or? No, we do recruiting. This is our high school, so for recruiting. Awesome. Yeah. They, they spoke in my class for that. Yeah. Uh, US Army. Just saying hi during lunch. Didn't know something was going on. Sorry. <laughs> hey, thank, thanks for what you guys do, man. Oh, and thank you for oh, your service. Awesome. you guys. Thanks. 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 So the patch he had, <laughs> when, when you see an Army guy with a patch on their right arm, that's their combat patch. That's the unit they worked for when they were downrange. He worked for the 101st Airborne, and that eagle on the side of their arm, we call it the Screaming Eagle. I worked for one of his bosses in Afghanistan. So what we, we, you learn pretty quick in the military, it's just like fraternity. And you, you get to know everybody pretty uh, pretty well, even if you've never met somebody. But that's it, man. You, whatever, whatever thresholds you have in your mind, you can bust through those. You just gotta want to do it, you never quit. People will tell you, hey man, you, you're not eligible to do this because you, don't have the right grades, let's say, or you can't do something else because you don't have the right qualifications. If you put your mind to it, you can achieve anything. If I learned anything out of BUDS and a career in the SEAL teams, anything you want to do, you can achieve. The only thing holding you back is yourself. Nobody else is going to hold you back. So if you have, what, what, what's your next goal in Waterfall? Where are you guys? What's your next 
kind of threshold or your next I'm, goal? I'm actually curious as to what the answer is to that. Your next immediate goal would be what? Do you want to have a game tomorrow? Do you guys have a game tomorrow? Who's it against? Yeah, that's the beginning of a tournament. So we're in something known as the Southern California Championships. Okay. We should on paper finish in the top 16. Why, why only the top, I'm asking you guys, why only in the top 16? What defines why you're only going to be in the top 16? What is it that makes that determination? Is it somebody else's subjective feeling because of your record? Is that why you're, you're estimated to be in the top 16? Yeah. Right? Why can't it be in the top 8? Okay, if it can be in the top 8, why couldn't it be in the final four? I mean, why? Who is it that's telling you you can't be in the final four? It's this very subjective measure based on somebody else's measurements, based on how they think you're going to do, based on historical expectations or historical perspective, right? Oh, well, their record is, you know, three and seven, so they're not finishing the top. Whatever. If you collectively, as a team, make a decision that you're not going to settle for top 16 and you're not going to settle for top 8 and you're going to get into the final four, I mean, life is all about busting through expectations, busting glass ceilings, right? And the only ones that can do that are yourself. And it can't be you or you or you doing it. It has to be all of you together. That's the whole team concept. If, if you guys are all out there and you're all on the same sheet of music and you all decide we're going to finish 16, guess what? You'll finish 16. If you all are out there and saying we're going to get to the championship game, which one has a better chance of getting to the championship game? The first group or the second group? Why? Is it is your physicality, are you stronger, or do you have more, be, be, what, what changed between those two outcomes? The mentality. It's all up here, man. One other thing, John, that, that, that she, is I tell these girls, like this is where I stand, if they have the determination to win the tournament, I will put them in a position to win each game. Like I will go like, okay, they're doing this, if we just do this, It'll give us a scoring opportunity. If they do this on offense, we do this and we will get a stop. And like, they can hold me accountable to that. Like, I guarantee you, I will do that. I, I guarantee you, <coughs> if all they had was what you're talking about, the determination, I will, will do the rest. Like, I guarantee I will. And so like, there's, there's, no, there's nothing really that can stop this team from winning this entire tournament, if, in my opinion, if, if they wanted to. If they wanted it bad enough, they're talented enough, for sure. They're in better condition than any of the teams that are in this tournament. Um, they are young, but that's, who cares? Um, and then, as far as like, they're doing this on offense, if you guys with your talent level do this on defense, you will get stops. When we go down to offense, this is what we're doing on, they're doing on defense, this is what we need to do to get either an outside shot or a one-on-one -on -one to the inside. I guarantee that I would take care of business and do my job for my end, I promise, and would be able to answer to everybody and their parents and go, I couldn't back up what I said. That's how confident I am. It's awesome, man. It's, it's, it's so much of life, whether we're talking about a, a, a sport or making it through a, a, a training that people tell you is impossible. So much in life is, is upstairs in that stuff between your ears, right? I look at a lot of sports like NASCAR, right? You guys are familiar, NASCAR, every car in NASCAR has to be in these exact thresholds of capability. You can't be beyond that capability and you can't be, it's gotta fit, it, every car is basically the same, right? But what is it that wins in NASCAR? It's not the car, it's the driver. It's the brains behind the car, right? So if you think of 
guys are in incredibly good shape, right? You, I mean, you, you, you've worked so hard to get to where you are now. I guarantee a lot of the other girls, a lot of the other team, they're all in really good shape too, right? So let's just say for the sake of argument, you have two, good, two teams and they're both in the exact same shape, right? And they both have the, a very similar offense style. And they both have a very similar way that they approach defense. And on paper, they're the exact same. Who wins? <coughs> who said it? Yeah, that's who wins every time. But it can't be one person, it has to be the whole team. And the whole team's gotta be on the same sheet of music. One other thing about the dynamic of this team is that th there's no question that this team is in better condition than any team will play. There's no question. The other thing, too, is coaches don't trust their players after their top players. And I'll sub to give them an opportunity to go out there and play until they show that they will not play. But we, suit, we, we, we go to our bench. So not mm -hmm. only are we in better condition than any team we're going to play, mm -hmm. we sub in and out so we have like through attrition, there, we have a huge advantage in that in that regard. Like we are in better condition and we have more subs that we use and trust to go into the game. Um, and the only thing is some of these other girls are older and bigger and stronger that we play against. <coughs> you know. Hey man, dig deep. When's, that, when's the game, today, today or tomorrow? tomorrow. It's tomorrow? Tomorrow we are okay. significantly better than the opponent. Uh, the next day on Friday, the, the opponent uh, beat us before, but I feel strongly that we should be able to beat them if we have the mentality that you're talking about. We, we will beat Carlsbad. And I don't think that, and there's no pressure also on these girls because when you beat Carlsbad, it's going to surprise everybody except for me and maybe you guys. So something that I uh, like to talk to people about is it, there's – this, when you're talking about this mentality on how you approach things in life, in, in this case we're talking competition, it is so much more effective to approach something not as a binary, that it is either going to be a win or a lose, but there's only one option, and you're going to win. You're going to win, period, end of story. You don't deal with an outcome other than that until after it happens. But hopefully, we don't even go there ever. The only thing we think about is winning. In this training, with Bud's training and all this stuff, you go in with, you're never gonna quit. And then when things get really, really, really hard and people start dropping like flies and they, and they start ringing the bell, the people that have only one thing in their mind that they're not gonna quit, those are the ones that stick around, right? The same can apply to a team sport, okay? My, my coach growing up, my swim coach growing up, Mike, Mike Troy, he used, to, he used to pull us aside and tell us stories about how he would visualize the gold medal he was gonna win in 1960 Rome Olympics and set the world record in the 200 fly. So, a year before that event in Rome at the Summer Olympics, he had written on his mirror the time he was going to go and the world record he was going to set. And he had in his mind's eye what it was going to be like is standing on the podium, wearing the gold medal, and listening to the U.S. national anthem. And that is all he thought about for the entire year before the Olympics. There was no, like... Well, how am I going to stand in the silver position? How's that going to feel when the race is over? No, there was only one thing he ever thought about, and it was only the pathway to victory. Don't let any of that other crap go in your head. Yes. None of that other what if. You're going in, and you're going to crush it. And then the next one, you're going to go in, and you're going to crush it. And if you have that mentality, nobody can stop you. Cool? Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right.